some weird things with the active sound design, which is like the fake sounds piped in through the speakers, and it makes it sound like a five-cylinder Audi. It's so weird. I've never seen anything like this at all. Hello, good morning, and welcome to another Kyle Connor YouTube channel video. You join me in the middle of New York City, parked the wrong way with a mini Clubman. Uh, I've just been attending Climate Week here in New York City, and we are actually going on a small adventure up to see my parents, and then over to Boston, and then I gotta go to New Jersey because I'm flying to Portugal tomorrow. But since I was here doing some stuff with Mini, I was like, hey, do y'all have a car I can take to go rip up to Boston really quick? And they're like, yeah, take this sick Cooper S Clubman all four. I believe it's the Untold Edition. We gotta check it out. We're going on a trip. It's not electric, this one, which is why it's going on this channel. But you guys know I'm a huge mini enthusiast, if that makes sense. And um, yeah, I haven't really spent time with the Refresh Clubman yet. It's nearing the end of its life cycle. So let's go have some fun with this mini. And here it is, the new mini Clubman Untold Edition. Best part of Clubman, of course, are the barn doors in the back. So that is just one of the most fun things that you can have. You can see I've already got my suitcase loaded up in there. Little storage in the back as well. This one is not the JCW version, but you can get a John Cooper Works Clubman. And honestly, I actually prefer the first generation Clubman with the three door. This is certainly a little bit longer, but it's still like one of the few wagons, is it technically considered, sold in the US that's re reasonably inexpensive cool wheels and by inexpensive it's quite expensive but it's not like an rs6 or an e450 all-terrain type of cost this one also highly specced with the mini yours lounge leather at least that's what it used to be called we should see if there's a window sticker in here new displays new steering stuff here as well haven't seen these new buttons yet it's been a while since i've been in a brand new mini and i also haven't experienced this transmission i wonder if it's the dual clutch or if it's the zf8 speed we certainly need to take a look again i just just grabbed the car we'll figure it out together honestly pretty cool looking all around i wish it had the roof rails i think that makes the clubman but overall good color good spec let's go on a trip we got i don't know four or five hundred miles to do in this thing over the next day and a half so what do you say we do it you join me inside of the clubman now in front of a hotel near central park and here's the window sticker great okay so it's a 2023 mini cooper s clubman all four things forty four thousand four hundred dollars iconic trim mini untold edition so i was right on that and let's see eight speed sport automatic so it doesn't have the dual clutch i don't believe like the hard tops do Heated steering wheel credit, which means it doesn't have heated steering wheel. LEDs, all the good stuff. Nav system, dynamic damper control, performance summer tires. Nice. Okay, well that all sounds and looks good. Let's start it up. We are on the B48 engine. This thing's got 10,400 miles on it, dang. They've been driving this thing. That's one of the highest mileage uh, media vehicles I've ever gotten. I wonder if this is a full press car. I think it is, uh, rather than just like a marketing car or something. Putting the seat, oh, you can sit nice and low in this one, which is great. Let's see, um, we'll go with Mini Driver 1. We'll turn off, show profiles at startup. I'm gonna go through and get everything set up. They have a little iDrive control system down here. We have our drive modes, traction control, auto start, stop head up display on the silly screen there so much to explore so yeah let's get everything set up and then we got to battle new york city traffic this week is crazy because it's the un week so you have all of these like bulletproof escalades rolling around and you know seven series and s-class bulletproofs and s-class pullmans it's insane and then you also have like climate week on top of that so you have just an extreme gridlock you can see this road we're on is closed for un uh, you know, ease of travel. It's just crazy what's going on around here. So we'll do all this, uh, get it set up, and then somehow I got to get onto that street and get where we're going. We have just gotten on the road. I've got CarPlay set up, NYPD everywhere, all of the diplomat stuff going on. It's just crazy. 
and um, we are on the way out of town just in drive in comfort mode in normal mode in the clubman at the moment really loving the size of this car i've always been a clubman fan because it's been sort of the unloved car it's been weird good spec tycon right here that is nice and um yeah just just really looking forward to getting out of new york city you guys know i'm not a new york city fan i grew up pretty much in the area and i just whenever i'm here not in a great mood ready to get out of here get up to the northeast love new england so let's do that plenty of room in this car loving the barn doors in the back it's so quirky it's so interesting so um actually i'll reset the trip computer so we can log some efficiency stuff i'm not really going to be driving it hard at all so i guess we'll go to my mini and i don't even know how to do it with this system see that says 30 mpg but i hit it and we go to settings um yeah so much to figure out here we'll get it to you join me now ripping up the hudson parkway if you look to our left you'll see the waterway and New Jersey on the other side of the Hudson River. And yeah, so let's just do a little acceleration test of the Mini, shall we? So we have it in normal mode. It's so weird driving a combustion car. Everything's so laggy and <laughs> turbo lag and all these things. And I remember I used to uh, be really into Minis when this engine was just coming into the car. And I remember thinking, wow, it's so responsive and so torquey. And my goodness, have times have changed. It's pretty pretty funny actually so we'll do 60 miles an hour foot down ready there we go 4,000 rpm it's just not much power is it <laughs> i remember thinking wow this is impressive a two liter four cylinder engine this is the b48 engine really has so much torque and now they're coming out with a technical update for the refresh uh of the mini stuff as well as the bmw things and well, just an interesting experience, that's for sure. It feels like going back in time, and honestly, I really like it. I think this will be great. We don't have to worry about charging on this trip because charging in the Northeast kind of sucks, but of course, you can do the New York to Boston run in any EV pretty easily. This is pretty bumpy over here. And um, yeah, I've been doing this drive my whole life. The Connecticut to New York City drive, we'll just send it up the road, and uh, yeah go see my dad we're gonna go visit him hey thanks for coming over welcome to Arlay. it's pretty nice over here isn't it ah now you hit the gas thank you come on mini i'm floored and he's pulling away okay when you know a honda accord pulls harder than a mini we are now merging on to i-95 heading towards connecticut so uh, 21 minutes to go 14 miles, not bad. We've been stuck in some traffic and um, yeah, other people just drive 30 miles an hour in the left lane and like hold hands with the car in the right. <laughs> Driving around here is fascinating because you get some people that just absolutely send it and then some people who go really slow. <laughs> and it's just different to driving anywhere else in the country or really the world. Uh, it's pretty fascinating, but uh, I always get into the New York driving mode when I'm here, just wanna send it everywhere. And yeah, maybe I shouldn't drive like that anymore. Anyway, uh, let's see what we're up to. We're gonna go see my dad. I'm gonna steal my mom's Model Y and make a video with that. And then um, I think that's it. Then, then we're going to jump back in the Mini and blast up to Boston. So we'll see my dad for lunch, and that'll be that. Should be kind of fun. Looking forward to it. Let's merge on to 95 now. Come on, people. Foot down. Why is there so much lag? And we are easily up to speed now. Look at this. The Mini. Loving the Mini so far. Just come on. <laughs> I'm just living at full throttle. Yeah. I think the JCW version has over 300 horsepower now, and that feels like probably the minimum acceptable amount of power for something like this. So I haven't driven that car, but I hope to have a go in it someday, the JCW Clubman. Those are pretty rare, but um, I, my suggestion is upgrade to it if you're thinking about getting one, because this is just a little bit... Relax. Also, Escalade from Colorado in front of us. Nice. Represent. And welcome to Stamford, Connecticut. My dad's office is just up over here, so let's go say hello to him and uh, see what's going on. But uh, so far, downtown Stamford looking nice. It's a nice city. 
just kind of how I remember it. So, yep, this is the mall on the left. All pretty normal. Well, we have arrived to the parking garage and here's the Mini Clubman Untold Edition. Just taking a chance to look at it a little bit closer. Nice painted arches here, but still uh, have that texturized plastic look. Very interesting. You can see the Untold logo being presented on the floor. I also noticed it here on the steering wheel right there. Um, overall, such a high quality feeling product. Um, yeah, just maximizing the use of space back here. Loving the tail lights. Of course, the barn doors mean you need to have room to swing them open. Little details like these vinyl graphics on the roof, really quite interesting and liking them. I also like how they don't go over the sunroof so it doesn't feel weird inside the car. Yeah, I mean, this is very highly styled. It's got the new mini logo on the hood. Overall, I, I'm really into it. I think, yeah, the front of new Clubman looks a little bit weird. In a sense, it's almost like too wide and too bulbous, especially head on. Like this view is slightly awkward, but driving it, it's a wide car. It feels nice, quite comfortable, and uh, definitely looking forward to putting the miles on it going to Boston. So we're only about 40 miles in coming up here to Connecticut and, you know, hour and a half of driving or something like that. I don't know how long it took, but pretty nice. Good room in the back as well. Certainly a car that no one talks about but uh, I really enjoy it. Hello, there he Welcome is. My yeah, you have a nice parking garage. Yeah, do you see any nice uh, spicy cars? There's a Rivian over here. There's a Model S over there. Oh yeah, hello. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Very good to see you. Yeah. Wow, what a surprise, you're wearing a Tesla hoodie. <laughs> I know, I haven't shown the viewers that. Uh, <laughs> you know, they make the best cars in the world. Oh, you wanna see the Model Y? Mom's car? Yeah, I haven't seen it yet. What do you mean you haven't seen it yet? I have not seen her car yet. Really? Yeah. It looks just like every other white Model Y. Wow, really so cute. that's exciting. Yeah. And I park in the same spot every day. <laughs> really? Creature I have. Well, I was pretty close. I'm right there. So that was close to over you, here. What do you have, a Mini? A Mini. All right, there it is. Oh, wow. And it this, uh, E34 this M5. M5. I know, here. that's what I was checking out. With the yellow. Uh, yeah, the yellow that's lights. very nice. What's what's the deal with yellow lights? They're better in fog. Yeah, I don't know. There's mom's car, okay. There you go. Yeah, nice. Well, it looks, looks dirty. Yeah, well, it's properly used. Okay, very cool. Yeah, they didn't want to let me in here. Why? Oh, because they said uh, you, you have to pick someone up upstairs. But then the upstairs guy said you got to pick someone up downstairs. So I was just like, I can go back and forth for an hour if you want, but someone's got to let me park somewhere. And then they said, okay, you got five minutes. You should have just dropped my name. They yeah. love me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I'm just out for a little drive in the Model Y. Got Starbucks, of course. And um, yeah, just cruising around, been playing with all the software stuff. It's been a little while because I haven't had my three. A friend of ours is borrowing our Model 3 while her car is broken. So I've been, uh, been without this for a little while. So I'm loving all these little buttons that you can put in here. You can make this basically this scroll wheel adjust a bunch of things. So I can put it to temperature and then I can boom, go up and down. And you activate this just by hitting the pr pressing and holding to pull up this menu. And so I can do that here, press and hold. Now we can adjust temperature, fan speed, whatever it is. I can go in, I can go back. Super awesome. And uh, loving that feature. That is great. Just the over the air updates are awesome. One thing I am noticing about the Model Y, by the way, it's not good, is how boomy it is from the back seat. You hit a bump and it's just this huge resonance, this deep bassy tone resonance in the car. And I think what's going on is my mom does not have installed the parcel shelf in the back. And I think she really needs to put that in. It can really dampen some noise. I was talking to Brandon Flash about that actually. And he says on his uh, Model Y, it made a big difference to go with the four section, the new updated parcel shelf versus the old three section version. And um, I think the Model Y needs it. I never, I guess I've only really driven them with the parcel shelf in there. Is that true? But I've never noticed one so boomy as this. It's just big, you know, resonance with the back, which is something you typically get with a hatchback. So that's partially why they keep that uh, parcel shelf installed. Uh, or at least from the factory. Other than that, the new updated suspension on Model Y feels good, but it's not as soft as I was expecting. It's totally acceptable. Previous 
suspension unacceptably harsh on this car. Now it's livable, but it's not great. I still think Tesla needs to do adaptive damper on Model Y. Just really let this thing soften out, and then you can dial it up if you want to let it work. It maybe would add some cost to the car. I mean, definitely would add some cost to the car, but maybe not that much. Uh, not sure. Maybe just put it on the higher end versions, the, the long range and the performance. But I guess they also just killed the 4680, so who knows. Anyway, uh, just some thoughts of the Model Y as I'm cruising around it. My mom's got herself a great car here. You don't need anything more. She has the acceleration boost. It's plenty quick. And um, yeah, my dad's office is just over there waiting for him to finish a meeting. And then we're going to go get some lunch. I am now just following my dad over to the Stamford Diner. He's driving the Mini at the moment. And um, nice to see that the Clubman, they updated the brake lights in the LCI model to be in the doors rather than the early ones, which the brake lights were in the bumper, which looked stupid. So nice updates there. And um, yeah, I was just waiting around for him a little bit, watching Marquez Brownlee's review of the new iPhone. Uh, just awesome stuff. Looking forward to trying a lot of that out. And um, yeah, mine should be here on lunch day, but I'll be in Portugal, sadly. So I'll get it slightly after. But that Mini is looking great. We are off to the Stamford Diner to get some food. So we're charged up to 72%. I actually went to the Supercharger. I forgot to film that. But went to the Supercharger, topped up, and uh, now we're ready to go get food. Well, we decided not to go to the Stamford Diner, and instead we are getting some a pizza. Uh, you guys know I'm a huge fan of One Bite Pizza Reviews, David Portnoy stuff. And one of my favorites that I've actually reviewed for the One Bite app was Sally's in New Haven. But I heard from my dad that they have a Stamford, Connecticut location. Uh, Sally's and Pepe's sort of uh, competitors, if you know anything about pizza, pretty good stuff. He's just sitting here idling in the uh, mini. I'm not really sure why. Hey, how do you put this thing in park? You hit P. Oh. Really? I was, hit, I was hitting the side thing. I don't know. <laughs> that unlocks the shifter. <laughs> what do you think of the new Mini? It's pretty tight. It's nice, isn't it? Yeah, it's very premium. I really yeah. like the, the finishing touches. The the paint color, nice. Yeah, this is the untold edition. I, they still make this uh, Clubman? Yeah, this is uh, the Clubman's ending its life, but it's kind of cool. It's like a wagon. I like it. I've always wanted a Clubman. You've never owned a Clubman? Never owned a Clubman. What's wrong with you? I know. Get out there. But, uh, you know, the new Mini Electric, the one that I just reviewed, is even nicer on the inside than this. Is that a Countryman? They have an, a Countryman and a Hard Top that are, like, super premium. This parking garage does not feel super premium. I know. Premium. That Did dude you? drove by in the Dodge Ram. It felt like we were about to fall out. All right. Let me get I'm hungry. All right. Let's get some pizza. Check this out. Pizza boxes lining up. Sally's Pizza over here. This is Sally's Stanford style, not New Haven style. Right, so it, do you find a difference? It's still a it's pizza. Still good. It's still good, but some people are like, ah, it's not as good as the New Haven, right? Yeah, you but know? when you see... You're going to get your hands all blackened. Yeah, because you know, it's charcoal. Oh, yeah. But when you see a pizza... Oh yeah, it's not Sally's pizza. It's Sally's a pizza. Yeah, uh, you know. that's when you see the A, you know you're at a good place. Yeah. That's this that's is, what we've is, learned. This is legendary. Yeah, all right, well, let's try it out. It's insane. What the heck did you order? Uh, you said large. I meant normal large. Not like <laughs> ginormous. <laughs> this, is, this wouldn't fit in the back of the mini. That's funny. All right, well, I guess you got some extra to bring back. We gotta get an F-150. That's right, you need something bigger. <laughs> well, there we go. Sally's, we got a little bit of take home for mom. Yeah, I am uh, beyond full. That would be true. You chowing down. Hey, I, I don't know where you put it all. I eat once a day. It's like in the, in the hoodie, in the back of your sweatshirt. I don't know sure. where it is. Sure, but that was great. Really, really good. Yeah. And uh, so now what's the plan? You're gonna take the Model Y? I am going to go back to work. Oh, that sucks. It does, yes. Yeah, when are you joining out of spec full time? Oh, I gotta go back to work. Okay. <laughs> okay. You know, uh, and you're heading over to see mom. I'm gonna go see mom on the way to Boston. Okay. Good. So, off we go then. Are you sure you don't wanna take the uh, Model 3? Yeah, I was thinking maybe I would take the 3 up there. I don't know. The Mini, I don't have to charge it. I kind of prefer to charge. Come on. It's so boring to not charge, actually. Yeah, I mean, what are you going to do? Put gas in a Mini? That's no fun. Yeah, maybe I'll take the uh, maybe I'll take the Model 3. If you take the Model 3, leave the keys. Don't pull a Kyle on me. Yeah, don't steal the keys <laughs> to the Mini. Don't steal the keys to the Mini now. Okay. Back in the Mini now. Let's go say hey to my mom real quick and then blast up north. 
Well, I've parked the Mini over here. Mom, how's it going? Well, great, because here you are. Here I am. Special occasion, Kyle's in Connecticut. That's right. Well, I'm leaving you with the Mini, actually, okay. and I've decided to take Dad's Model 3 rear-wheel drive. And he's got my Model Y. And he has your Model Y, so we're all confusing. Totally. Um, but he'll be home soon with your Model Y, so this is okay if I leave it here. Totally I just figured, okay, no reason to put miles on a press car if we're not reviewing it, so... Yeah, it's a really good looking car. So you like this one? I do. I love the color, you know, and I've always loved Mini. Always yeah, you've had Minis. I sure have. Um, okay, great. So I'm going to take the Model 3 in this video okay, uh, to Boston. Sitting in traffic for hours. Well, that's kind of why I wanted to take the Model 3. No adaptive cruise on this Mini. Oh. And there's autopilot on the 3. <laughs> you think. You think ahead. That's right. Thank you, Bailey. Oh, adding don't, to... Don't get that. <laughs> 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 okay, so Model 3 is at 77%. It says I'll make it to... Uh, 71%. Okay, well, it so says I'll make it there at 7%, okay. which is plenty. Good. Oh, <laughs> I'll call you David. He's like daddy. Okay, well, uh, okay. Well, I guess I'll see you tomorrow again, I hope. See you tomorrow. It's like greatest day ever. Connor yeah. Connor in the house. That's right. So I'm going to go up, be back in the afternoon. I'll film with dad, why he's selling the Lucid, all of these things. Yeah. Cause that gets picked up tonight. Yes, it does. So I'll take one last clip yeah. of that. Okay. And then, oh, yeah. And then, um, then, then I got to go to the airport and I leave at eight 30 for Portugal for Portugal. Wow. Can I go with you? You probably could. <laughs> be nice. Yeah. Love I don't know. It's a lot of work. I don't think you'd enjoy it. Not much sightseeing. Oh, okay. Well, I'll stay home. Yeah. Well, and now it's time to say goodbye to Out of Spec Dave's Lucid, the Cannonball Lucid. We've done a lot with this car. And uh, it gets picked up and goes to its new owner tonight. Uh, I've driven this car across the country, literally, New York to LA, back to Colorado, and uh, lots of adventures in between. Uh, the car is pretty good. Really like the car. There still needs to be some improvements from a thermal standpoint, from a charging standpoint, um, and uh, you know, from from a comfort, from a performance standpoint. Really, one of the best cars uh, on the road, no question. It's a really nice handling and really nice driving car. But for me, I never got a hundred percent comfortable with the seating position. Never really got along great with the sound system, and the driver assistance got to be pretty good. Um, the car still needs some refinement, but it's so much better than even when we got it originally. Software updates are amazing. The car is good. I hope Lucid has big success. Maybe we'll get another one at some point in the future just to check up and see how they're doing as they progress. But I think we've told all the stories we could tell with this particular one. So it is off to California to, I think, someone who already has a Lucid and he's getting this for his wife. But um, yeah, there you go. The out of spec Lucid is no longer out of spec as of two or three hours from now when the truck is coming to pick it up. You can see no longer the license plate on the back. It is time for it to go. Just uh, here in the Model 3, it's actually at 70%, indicated 189 miles of range. Model 3 LFP, so efficient. Let's just see what my dad has been doing. Wow, look at these numbers right here. Over 1,400 miles, 224 watt hour per mile. Crazy. This car only has 2,095 miles on it. Um, and what's interesting is I thought I had already driven this car when we picked up his Lucid, but I haven't because he changed this one for an identical one. So I've driven the last one, but I haven't even seen this car yet. You wouldn't know the difference. I don't even remember why he changed it. Do you? No. I think he got to change exchange it for a brand new one and made a thousand dollars or something. Yeah. Yeah, I forget why he got this one. But anyway, it's nice. We are going up to Natick, Massachusetts, which is just on the west side of Boston. It says it wants to charge at the Fairfield supercharger, but I'm going to remove that and see if there's a way we can get up there and still make it. There we go. 6% arrival. Why do we need to charge Tesla? We can make it. So let's do it. And let's just see if there's any bailout options along the way. Oh my goodness. So many, so many charging possibilities as we get closer up there. So we can always stretch it to one of these if we can't quite make it to Matic if we need to. And then there's some over there. So good stuff. Let's go on the road to Massachusetts. We'll keep filming with the mini tomorrow and uh, we'll say goodbye to you and Bailey and the Lucid. All right, don't forget to come back tomorrow. I'll be back tomorrow. All right, All right goodbye. Bye, love you, honey. Love you.
Well, we are heading out towards the highway and I just noticed here that my dad has already taken this car to Boston. He has a trip here. Um, I imagine he's driven more than that at this point because Boston is only a couple hundred miles away, not 1400 round trip. But let's just go, whoops, what am I doing here? Let's go to trips. Let's go to reset Boston. I don't even have to rename it. There we go. Now we can track everything from here on the way to Boston. Uh, we are at 69% state of charge. Cruising through the back roads here in Connecticut. Always very nice. This is, again, where I grew up, so all of this is quite familiar. Uh-oh, Merritt is looking busy, which is probably why it's taking us this roundabout way. It says we'll be up to Natick at about 625, which is a reasonable time. And full throttle. You really don't need any more than this. Wow, at 45 miles an hour, it really gives you everything, doesn't it? Okay, and the speed limit's lower than that, so we have to slow down. Just love the Model 3. Certainly interesting getting out of the Mini and into this car, though. The Mini feels so much more premium and quieter, and I don't know. I actually prefer the 3 to the Y as well. I just like sitting lower in this car. So, yeah, I don't know. All good. Pretty fun. Let's uh, send it on down the road. This is wild. They're using the same school buses to when I went to school. Those things are old now. They've got to be, I'm trying to think, I graduated high school in 2012, 13, something like that, 10 years ago. And we had those buses for a few years. So, dang. Yeah, this was my bus route too. So now I'm sitting in the traffic I used to sit into at the same time every day. Wow, pretty fun. Not really. So let's go, dude, with the trailer, hit the throttle take a look at our route heading up it's going to have us basically get on to 84 go through basically cut right of springfield mass and then over towards boston sounds good perfect day for a drive 70 degrees sunny no wind pretty perfect and uh model 3 freaking awesome car man love that how efficient it is it's spicy it's responsive it's nimble it's it's everything you really want from just a general car. And their new Model 3 refresh makes it even better, except for the stocks. I do like the stocks in this one. So anyway, off we go. Hell yeah, we are here. I actually kind of do did wish I took the Mini just because I really love the Mini. Um, but you know, I got to drive as many cars as possible and I'm going to drive that one to Newark tomorrow. So I figured I'd try out this Model 3. I'm always trying to drive as many different vehicles as I can. Autopilot, of course, always nice to have. Um, although it's following distance isn't close enough. We got a freaking rip here. So everyone out of our way. I've tried to put it to the closest, but um, the non-radar cars don't go to one. They go to two and maybe even the radar cars go to two on the following distance now. So you can't get them as close as you used to be able to get them. Uh, that's nothing new though. That's been that way. Car feels quiet, no rattles. Honestly feels quieter than my mom's Model Y. Uh, this thing is pretty great. Can't believe they're like mid $30,000. <laughs> and in some states like Colorado, under 30 grand. Just crazy what you can get these things for and they're so capable. We have been cruising along for some time now and let's take a look at the efficiency. I haven't taken a look yet. I know I can do it with this little trip card. Holy smokes, 200 watt hour per mile. Are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> We're not even going slow. We're cruising along. I mean, yeah, we had a little stop and go, but this car is magic. Whatever Tesla did, it, it almost, gains electricity as it drives it's so efficient this is crazy 200 watt hour per mile that's insane i do <laughs> it's just so much less than any other electric car i've tested i really think it'd be fun to put this up against an original ionic electric because those were magically efficient as well nice model s right here and uh, yeah cruising along loving it final three damn Base Model 3, baby. This is the freaking car. It's so good. We are now coming into the Boston area, and uh, you can see the traffic is picking up. We are currently at 16% state of charge. It says we'll get to Natick, which is where I'm heading, at 11% state of charge. So let's head on over there. Maybe I'll top it up tonight, something like this. I don't know, but uh, time will tell how it all plays out. There's plenty of superchargers in the area, that's for sure. So I'll pick one of those and juice it up. You join me for a rate your charge update in Newton, Massachusetts, where of course, Tesla version three supercharger 
working great. Let's actually check our charging speeds. We are getting 171 kilowatts as expected. You can see there are two charge point CPE 250s over here, which interestingly, there's two of them, but they're non-linked. So 62 and a half kilowatts on each. Again, they should have run a DC bus between the two to make it 125 kilowatts. Why they didn't do that, I'm not sure. Um, I imagine these were installed not necessarily in cooperation with Tesla since it says Mass Department of Transportation. So maybe they should get on that and link these two. But other than that, nice spot right off the highway. Plenty of amenities. Couldn't ask for a better charging stop than this. And it is now the next day. Good morning. Had a good time last night. Lots of nerd stuff. Really enjoyed it. Just a quick little gathering of some EV nerd folks. And uh, I'm actually in Framingham. So just on the west side of Boston. I actually went into downtown Boston, but I was with people. So I didn't really feel like filming. Now I am charging up. So what I did yesterday was I charged up in Newton, Massachusetts, just for like 10 minutes on the way into Boston just to get enough to get back out. So I charged from, I want to say, 5% to 30% in really no time at all. Uh, and now I'm at a version 2 supercharger charging up the Model 3 LFP and uh, just in Framingham on the way out of Boston. So uh, just outside of Natick. And uh, yeah, let me show you about the charging session. Let's explore some stuff. And then we got a drive back to Connecticut. So you join me at this version two supercharger and you might be wondering, well, why didn't you choose a version three? Well, this car only charges at 170 kilowatt peak and not for that long. So actually a version two supercharger in the standard small battery model three, the standard range doesn't really affect charging times all that much. This has a really good charging curve, the LFP battery pack. And let's actually go into here and take a look at the service menu. It's something I haven't done on the LFP cars very much. So let's go here. Service fans are just kicking on. Enable, turn climate back on. And let's see what's going on in here. So we have some high voltage charging. This is what we're used to. Max temp 51 degrees Celsius right now. 320 amps, just sending it in. Ah, interesting. It tells us the AC and DC pin temperatures, but those are the same pins. So, which makes sense that they're the same temperature. Maybe if it has a CCS port, it would tell us differently for like Europe. So that's a new thing I hadn't seen before. That's cool. Um, let's see, we haven't done a battery health test on this one. Everything's looking normal. Everything's looking good. What else is there to see here? Steering. Oh yeah, this is cool. So it tells you like what you're hitting if you hit the turn signals. That's interesting. Let's go here to steering. So this is the electric power assistant rack. Interesting, so Colton's Model 3 is on the Gen 4. I think it says Gen 4, so maybe that's one generation ahead of us. Just so many cool things that you can do in here. I really love this charging menu right here. We can see the min and max cell temp, pretty big, 10 degrees Celsius, 11 degrees Celsius gradient temperature. Uh, but still, you'll notice the voltage isn't rising as we gain state of charge all that much. And that's just the nature of the lithium iron phosphate having a pretty consistent discharge curve uh, in terms of voltage sag. So pretty neat to see it just kind of hold steady. And um, you can see the pin temperatures just slightly getting warm, but really not, not even that bad. This is a fascinating thing. So we'll let it charge up to, I don't know, whatever, not much. We'll, uh, we're probably good to go, honestly, at this point. Let's take a look as to what we need to get back. So it said we get there at minus 21%, but we can just splash and dash at one of these chargers. So what's this one? Vernon, Connecticut, right off the highway. This one, Manchester, Connecticut. Been to that one before. Never been to this one, version three. It's only 65 miles. Can we make it past that? What's this one? Rocky Hill, Connecticut. Let's see if we can make it to Rocky Hill, Connecticut supercharger. <laughs> Why did it just add all of these, these things here? Let's see. That was a bad route planning. Uh, 4%. Perfect. Let's do that. Let's head out here and I don't know, two or three percent, and we'll head to Rocky Hill. We are now heading out. We've unplugged at 47 percent state of charge with an indicated 126 miles. It's only 90 miles to that supercharger, so we may even stretch it past. Um, this car is so freaking efficient. I'll give you all the efficiency numbers later, but it's just 
true magic as to how little this car consumes. It also means that even though it doesn't have the highest peak charging rate, the amount of usable miles per time that we're sitting at a charger gaining is like epic. I think we were there for, I don't know, 10 minutes, something like that, and we've gained well over 100 miles. Pretty cool. Just pulling off the highway here for a little Starbucks morning break. I'm not gonna do the drive through, I'm just gonna go in. I was hoping there were actually chargers over here, but I'm not seeing any, although a lot of these um, Mass uh, Turnpike or these uh, Massachusetts uh, areas have charging infrastructure. I'm just kind of looking around, not seeing anything. All right, let's run back up to Starbucks, get some Starbies. We are now merging up to speed, pulling out of the Starbucks and hammering down to Rocky Hill, Connecticut. Going through the little toll pass thing. Really nice roadway infrastructure up here. It's been a while since I've driven to Boston, maybe two years, something like that. And yeah, great, great city, great roadways, nice people. Like Boston a lot, it's cool around here. Let's hammer down. We actually have to meet the transporter who's picking up the Lucid because he was supposed to come yesterday, but now he's coming today. So foot to the floor, let's go. Welcome to Springfield, Massachusetts. I made kind of a wrong turn. What we should have done was come down this way on 84, but there was literally no exit after I missed it. So we had to come all the way here to Springfield and then down. We're still heading to the same supercharger, just showing a 3% arrival now. No problem at all. All is good. Continuing, but typical Kyle move, missing exits, nothing new here. And welcome to Hartford, Connecticut. We are rolling through at 7% state of charge and a uh, nice countryman here on the right. Modified four series convertible in front of us. Car culture is totally different here on the East Coast than out in Colorado and uh, yeah, loving it. It's pretty great actually. See a lot of, a lot more modified cars out this way than we do in Colorado. I guess we do have modified cars with like lifted Jeeps and Broncos and Forerunners and Tacomas, but uh, more cars than trucks out this way. And uh, yeah, cruising through Hartford at the moment. So let's head to the supercharger. We are only 10 minutes away or so. Welcome to Rocky Hill, Connecticut. Not sure I've ever been here before, although it does seem vaguely familiar. Um, supercharger appears to be just up here on the right side. We are at 3% state of charge and here's the supercharger. So ah, it's at this nice little shopping center. So I think we turn in here, yep. And so they have, I don't know, restaurants, TD Bank, wine and liquor, sports bar. What more do you need? And we have one, two, three prefabricated supercharger units. So 12 stalls, 11 available according to the car. That makes sense. You have a Tesla Energy car right there. That's pretty cool. So factory uh, Tesla car. That's pretty cool. Anyway, let's back on into this supercharger. Get this thing plugged in at 3%. Before we do that, I do want to pull up service mode just to see what we get and how this will all play out. So service, boom. I'm curious what our pack voltage is when we're dead. High voltage, charging. Okay, we got to plug it in. We're at 40 degrees Celsius max cell temp. That's what it preconditioned to. It did precondition. Again, version three charger. This will be able to give us all the juice. Go away, Siri. I don't know, I just need to turn Siri off forever. She really sucks. Okay, we are now plugged in. So we're at 347 volts dead, ramping up 32, 50 kilowatts, 65 kilowatts. Voltage is just creeping up slightly. How many amps is this thing doing? 400 amps, 462 amps, maxing out 170 kilowatts. Pretty cool, actually. Neato, well, I'm gonna do a pretty deep charge here and um, yep, get a little bit of work done. So we'll charge up and I will see you when we're about to leave, but we are maxed out. This is as fast as this thing will charge. Well, it's just getting a little bit of work done and we are at 99% state of charge, 14 kilowatts. You can see our voltage is pretty much the same. Almost no difference throughout this charging process. And uh, now it's just doing a top charge, just a little calibration. 
I probably won't wait for it. You're supposed to let the LFP packs full charge at least once a week so that they don't lose calibration, basically what it's doing now. Maybe I'll give it a couple minutes, but um, yeah, that's something that can happen on level two as well once we get home. Yeah, these LFP cars, Tesla recommends 100% charge. All right, well, time to go. So we'll go here, this will go back. We are at 99%. I didn't fully let it calibrate to 100. We just kind of, oh, I guess it shows 100. What's it showing for range? 269 miles, pretty cool. Very close to full. These cars have very little degradation. We'll put in the address and let's motor back to... Uh, and that is where I used to work in high school. Welcome back. I was just hanging out with my mom, actually. So great to see her for a little bit. And uh, I'm running over to my dad's office to swap back. He took the Mini over there. Uh, I think to make a little video with it. And now I'm swapping the Model 3 for the Mini because I got to go to the Aeropuerto and head to Lisbon. So let's take a look at our stats for Boston. <laughs> as long as I don't die. 380 miles, 86 kilowatt hours, 227 watt hour per mile. And I was sending it everywhere. Again, we did a pretty deep charge so the car's still at 70%. Here we are, full power out of the way and we're on the brakes um this car is all you need and wow magically efficient 227 watt hour per mile that is crazy so we're heading over to my dad's spot we're going to swap the cars and then uh, you and i got to go to newark which should be i think almost a two hour drive according to the maps with traffic at the moment and that could only get worse so let's hope we make the flight well, I'm leaving the Model 3 rear-wheel drive here for my dad, curbside, and he should be rolling up any second now in the Mini, and we'll do a little swap on the side of the road, if you will. So he should be coming just around that corner any moment now. And here he comes in the Clubman, pulling alongside. So we'll do a little stop in the road. I'll throw my bag in the back, and that'll be that, if it'll unlock. <laughs> Can you click unlock on the door? We are in the Mini now. We gotta go to the Newark airport. So, road trip, let's do it. Engine temperature is slightly cold. We'll let it warm up, then we'll blast over. Man, super nice in here. So much higher quality than the Tesla right off the bat. The pros of the interior, the cons of the combustion drivetrain. Yeah, there's this is an interesting time in automotive to like be into electric and combustion and to appreciate pros and cons of both. But uh, for me, I don't know. It's definitely feeling a little old school. Well, we are on I-95 and already in a little bit of traffic, but we can squeeze through. And uh, we have, I don't know how much farther to go, something like an hour and a half from here. So we should be totally fine to make the flight. I'm gonna leave this at a parking garage for Mini, which is where they sort of handle their review cars. So this will go there. And then, um, then what are we gonna do? And I guess I'll just take a shuttle or walk over to the airport and fly to Portugal. That'd be the end of the video. Dang, really loving the Clubman. Almost kind of wish I took this to Boston. Uh, just would have been cool. Uh, but I enjoyed the superchargers and all that stuff. So. so I found that when you put the Mini in green mode, which is its green, you know, sort of efficiency mode, um, it does some weird things with the active sound design, which is like the fake sounds piped in through the speakers. And it makes it sound like a five cylinder Audi. It's so weird. I've never seen anything like this at all. I'll just give it the beans and you can hear what I'm listening to. Ready? It's got this like undertone. Of... It's this uh, very wookie sounding, if you I don't know how to describe it, but um, it's a very five cylinder noise when you mat the throttle in green mode. I've never heard anything like this. Let's do it one more time here, just so you can get a sense. It's amazing how different it sounds. And then just for comparison's sake, we'll put it in sport mode. Now it sounds like a typical four cylinder B48 engine with the fake sounds. That is so freaky how that changes the noise right there. Anyway, <laughs> the little things you find out when you're trying to hypermile, but then you end up burning more fuel because it just sounds so freaking cool as a five cylinder Clubman. 
That is epic. Welcome to New Jersey. We're heading to the New Jersey Turnpike South. So let's freaking do that. And uh, man, traffic was brutal. Just absolutely insane going through New York. Still leftover, you know, all the UN stuff is going on. So like half the roads are closed. People are angry. It's just kind of crazy coming into some stop traffic. We'll do a little hazard for the people way back there just to let them know, hey, we are stopped. And uh, cool, well, excited to make my flight. So I'll give you a little final wrap up on my thoughts on the Mini Clubman and then we'll roll. So as we're making our way very close to the airport drop-off location, I wanna reflect on my time with the Clubman as a Mini enthusiast, but also as someone who I think has to provide, at least on the Out of Spec Reviews channel, uh, new car buying advice to our audience. And the first thing as a mini enthusiast, finally in this Clubman, Mini has like really refined this platform. The engine calibration, at least, yes, it's a little laggy, but it's so smooth. There's no torque peaks or dips. It's just constant power all the way up. It's very interesting. Um, it's just a quiet, comfortable, if Mini were to have like a luxury cruiser, it would be this one. And this would be like, if I worked for Mini and I needed a company car, I would totally do a Clubman JCW with a bit more power because I think it kind of needs it. Um, interesting that this spec is well over $40,000. Let's just confirm the price. Whoa, bad filming, but I got to pull out the window sticker. The price is $44,000. $400 on this particular one. Yeah, it's got the great seats. It's got Harman Kardon sound system, head up display. But that Tesla Model 3 that we were driving was $38,000, $39,000. And it has autopilot, comparable sound system, uh, much more efficient and lower cost of ownership, much faster, um, you know, better resale value. It's like so hard to compete with Tesla. And yes, you are driving a much cooler, much more bespoke, much more expressive Mini in this case, but you are leaving some real key advantages. And this isn't like Clubman versus Model 3 video because that's not really something people are gonna be cross shopping, but I just can't help but be blown away with Tesla's value in the space. It's pretty amazing. Um, and also this car being $45,000 is a lot of money for a Mini. They've always been expensive. And I actually don't think that's a bad thing. P mini buyers want Minis and they will spend the money for a nice Mini and they've done it for years. I've done it for years. The thing is, I think that breed of Mini enthusiast is dying more or less, not in terms of age, but like just in terms of, okay, the brand hasn't done anything that interesting. And this car has been on sale for, I don't know, almost 10 years, something like that. Um, you know, this the new Clubman, maybe eight year cycle so far, we're into this one. So I think the overall scheme of Mini needs to be, um, you know, this next year is the big year for Mini. They have three or four brand new products coming to market that I think they need. I think that it's feeling long in the tooth. It's time for a refresh. The Mini Aceman is really going to replace the Clubman in this space, and that's going to be fully electric and solve a lot of the problems I have with this particular car and hopefully still be priced reasonably. So I think the best bet is if you're looking at a Clubman, buy used because they tank in value. You can buy a used JCW Clubman for 20s, I think. Uh, that's a reasonable value. Reasonable value. Just don't buy a new one would be my guess. If you get a good lease, then lease it. But uh, Mini's future this year, that will be the make or break for the, for the brand. Will people appreciate the new styling, the new materials, the new high quality stuff going into them and pay a premium for less range, less charging, less performance than a Tesla or other equivalent? Time will tell. I think there's certainly going to be a buyer. I just don't know how many of them there will be. So there you go, that was fun. We are almost to the airport, but I wanna thank you guys for watching, joining me the last two days of adventures. I did a really bad job filming, but I thought I'd take you for the fun because we were driving some stuff and going places and it didn't really fit on any of the other channels. Didn't really have time for full reviews on anything. Um, but uh, there we go, loving the Clubman. I'm really gonna miss it. I did, I'm so glad I got to experience this car and enjoy it. Um, really for one last time, probably. There's no reason for me to ever review this generation again. So thanks for watching another Kyle Connor road trip video. I'm pulling into the parking garage in five minutes and I'm taking a plane to Lisbon. We'll see you on another one soon. Bye-bye.